Hi, I'm Maria Fontanaza, editor with Food Safety Tech. I'm here with Maureen Hart, Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, and she's here on behalf of Roga Bioscience. We just saw her presentation, Behind the COA, Risk Assessment in Pathogen Testing Methods. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just kind of recap with you on what you discussed. Okay. Um, just tell me a little bit about the challenges that you see manufacturers facing when assessing results on a COA. Okay, so the certificate of analysis is basically a piece of paper with all this information on it. Some of it just general information, that is lot number information, the dates, etc. But there is a signature on there, and what that signature says is this: this certificate of analysis is telling you that this passed, and there are no pathogens basically in the product. So it will be safe for a consumer. And if I were a manufacturer or a food processor or whoever is at the end of that reading it, I would be wondering, at least I hope I would be wondering, and they all should, what does that mean? How was it tested? Am I, can I be assured of the result? So today, perhaps they get that in their hand and they think, oh, okay, it passed, I don't have to worry about it, but there are so many potential ways that it could be tested, and this is what I've found out as I've been working in these laboratories, is that there, there could be a large amount of variation between the test methods. So this should be a question on their mind, and they should all know what are those methods, what are the inherent risks, etc. Okay, so kind of Jumping off on that, what are the questions that manufacturers need to be asking? Well, they need to be asking themselves, what is the risk of that testing? What is the method behind it? And then how do, we, how do I understand that better? Who do I ask? Who do I go to? And those are the laboratories that are doing the testing. Okay, so you did speak a lot about FMEA. So how is that used to evaluate pathogen testing methods? The FMEA, first of all, is a quality tool, and I'm a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, and I tend toward these tools that have come into the Six Sigma methodology. So this is a risk assessment tool that allows us to identify for all of these methodologies, for example, to do pathogen testing, what are the risks involved with them? And then if there are risks, what should I do about it? How do I mitigate them? Or how do I just change the method in order to make sure they're not there, et cetera? So what, uh, what we did was do a study, take all of these methods, the main methods that are out there, and put them through this, um, this very disciplined process of the failure modes and effects of an analysis, which is an FMEA, to identify the risks and all of the points in there where there could be something that goes, goes wrong, and then figure out, you know, what does that look like for all of the methods. So can you give us some examples of success stories, who, people who've used FMEA, companies that have used it and, and are achieving success with it? Well, the, uh, the FMEA is uh, something that has, been, has started to be used in the food industry. Well, I shouldn't say started. It really started in 1959 with the manned spacecraft and the food that was being put on there. And um, since then, it's been used with the HACCP program and the HARP-C program that's part of the F uh, FISMA. And um, so there are multiple companies there. The, uh, there's a cookie dough study on it. There are salmon manufacturing case studies on it. Turkish Delight, which is a candy. Um, there are all sorts of stories that you can go, uh, you can just search for, and, and companies are using this. In all honesty, they're using it much more on the manufacturing side. And the great thing is that quality tools are quality tools. They're not manufacturing tools, and they're not harvesting tools. They're quality tools, so we can use them anywhere. So what I think is great about this is it's a good example of how do we pull it into the pathogen testing area or an area where per perhaps people aren't thinking as much in the supply chain, if you will, about risk. So this is a great application of it to just look at how is this testing being done and how can we compare them and just you know use a very objective uh, tool to say, here are the ratings, here are the risks of each one, and now what should we do about it? And so are there any partners that 
you would advise companies to work with when they're looking to use FMEA? Right, so yes, one of the biggest things that we see, the outcome of the FMEA is what we call a risk priority number. So um, based on the presentation, you saw what the, the final risk priority numbers, the ROCA Bioscience Atlas piece of equipment is a fully automated piece of equipment that's also um, built with lean principles, if you will, which means that as little waste as possible goes into the whole process of using that Atlas equipment. So what, that, what the outcome is, is a, an RPM that's significantly lower than their competitors and really the key reason is that you and I we don't have to put our hands on it right it's the complexity of the methodology anytime we get human intervention we automatically increase the risk in a process no matter how careful the humans are no matter how well trained they are if they have 30 steps that they have to do by hand mixing and and putting things together automatically the risk goes up so what the atlas has done by bringing full automation into the pathogen testing industry is they've taken out all of that risk or the majority of it by taking that out of the the uh, operator's hands, if you will. The sample comes in, there's very little touch to get it ready, and then it moves on to the equipment, and the equipment does all of the mixing and incubating, etc. So the other great piece of that is, if something should go wrong, then there's full traceability in the system because again, it's fully automated, it's all tracked within the system. So we can always go back and look to see what happened at any one time within the testing process and was it the fault of the process or was it just the sample that came in, what happened? So that's another thing that's really missing from the competition is, is this traceability. Well, that was very thorough. So is there anything else that you think manufacturers need to know when conducting risk assessment and pathogen testing methods? Yeah, I think just to remember as they get that piece of paper in their hand, it means more than or potentially means more than they think. So they see a pass on a piece of paper and that it's really up to them to understand what that means. There is a signature on it, but does that mean that the testing that was done is actually you know done by a method that has low inherent risk and and if it has risk do they understand that so that because this now is their product that's going out to the consumer and you know we know that there have very recently been recalls and from my understanding that product tested you know on the coa was a pass right so what are those people thinking now? So the biggest thing is just to question everything, right? I mean, it's what we have to do when we're putting food in the consumer's hands. Okay, great. Well, those are all my questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.